Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Money News. There's just a couple of stories this week, and I have a cold again. What's new? Let's just get right into the first story. Wobbling Pixels on Twitter posted this picture of the GBS to HDMI. The GBS 8200 is a component to VGA converter, I guess, that the GBS control project has turned into a low budget retro upscaler. I say low budget, but it's actually a pretty cool device. I have a GBSC AIO, which was a project that I'm not really sure who released it. They can converted one of those GBS 8200 boards and they've added on this, I think it's like a VGA to HDMI adapter. So basically creating a component and also SCART to HDMI scaler. The reason I'm showing you this is because this side here is that GBS 8200 board, but this entire side over here, other than the SCART plug over here, is the VGA to HDMI adapter. It's pretty large. This GBS to HDMI board that Wobbling Pixels is showing off is essentially an HDMI output for this GBS 8200 board. So you don't actually need to convert the VGA to HDMI. Somehow it can wire up the video signal and output straight to HDMI. This project is being developed by Electron Shepard, who, if you don't know, they have developed this Xbox 2 HDMI adapter. They don't have any details yet on their store about this product. So I'm gonna follow them on Twitter. Hopefully they release some more information about it because it sounds like you could build a much more compact version of the GBSC AIO. Razer X on Twitter has come up with a written guide on how to upgrade the firmware on the version 5.20 GDMU clones. He posted a zip file here on Mega that has some written instructions as well as the files that you're gonna need to upgrade the firmware. Now I did take a quick look at the instructions here and it seems very particular about the order of operations that you have to do this upgrade. Anyways, if you're gonna attempt doing this, make sure that you follow these directions carefully. I don't take any responsibility and they probably don't take any responsibility if you brick your new clone GDMU. But if you're feeling up to trying to upgrade the firmware on your clone GDMU, the newer versions, that version 5.20, you should go ahead and try this Razer X guide. Next, we have this kind of vague tweet from Darth Cloud, which I think is pretty cool. This is one of those Super Nintendo mini things, the tiny mini Super Nintendo HDMI console. And it sounds like he's got the Blue Retro Bluetooth controller adapter working on this Super Nintendo mini. What I think is hilarious is I think that the Super Nintendo mini uses those Wiimote style plugs here. So this is like the first console that I could think of that uses these Wiimote style that might plug into the Blue Retro. Shout out to Manic Socratic on Twitter who mentioned that you might be able to use Blue Retro on a Wiimote with an actual Wii. I guess that might be only useful for those Wii classic sort of weird pad things because I don't know of any other extension for the Wii, the nunchuck. <laughs> We're gonna have weird Bluetooth nunchucks, that'd be awesome. I don't know, it might be useful to play those virtual console games using any Bluetooth controller that you want to, but the only downside to that would be you would have to power your Blue Retro adapter using the Wiimote. I don't know, that's kind of weird. Unless you had an external power, I guess, connecting to the Blue Retro adapter. I can't imagine that the battery will last very long. I talked about the Wii more than the Super Nintendo console thing. Anyways, it looks like there's support now for the Super Nintendo Classic Mini console for Blue Retro. Speaking of more weird controller adapter things, Robert Dale Smith actually has another update on that USB to PC Engine adapter. It looks like there's some sort of a USB hub here. I guess this is supposed to resemble a PC Engine multi-tap. It sounds like maybe they're trying to work out a way to use this USB hub to get multi-tap working with their USB to PC Engine adapter. So that way you can use multiple 2.4 gigahertz PC Engine APA Doe controllers on a PC Engine at once. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be, you know, expected to work. It sounds like he's gonna hack this to work. So don't hold your breath about this actually being a feature of his USB to PC Engine adapter thing. It still is pretty cool. It looks like you probably would need multiple of those APA Doe USB adapter thing. So we'll have to hear more about this in the future. Next, we've got these renderings from Fixel, who I think they're the ones behind this uh, 3DO ODE. They have a rendering of the enclosure for the 3DO ODE. This is the export ODE version, which is like that external ODE that you can plug in the back of a 3DO. But it sounds like these files will be available for 3D printing. So you can probably make them whatever color you want. Maybe they'll injection mold some. Anyways, it's pretty cool to see some updates of this 3DO ODE project. 
shout out to Jeff Chen who finally released this DC to VGA dongle that he's been working on for like literally months. Let's check out the project on GitHub. As always, Jeff has some nice pictures on his guide. I really appreciate people that add pictures in your GitHub. Not to say that pictures are necessary, but I think it's nice to have some pictures to go along with your project to kind of give people an immediate image of what this project is about. Anyways, this is a little dongle thing that plugs into the AV outport on the back of the Dreamcast. It lets you switch between RGBS, which is just the normal sync RGB and RGB HV. And it has a stereo audio jack on the back. And there's another little switch that allows you to change between SD and VGA. I'm not super familiar with the different Dreamcast video modes. It sounds like one is only like an interlaced mode. It says 525i and then the other one, the VGA mode is a 525p. There's more information in this GitHub here about the different nuances of which mode is supported and whatever. Look at this crazy detailed guide, the 3D printing steps on how to put the boards together. Is this two different boards soldered together? That is crazy. Jeff really likes to use VGA for a lot of his video signals. He has a big setup that only uses VGA cables because he can kind of extend them and make custom cables. He's got other GitHub projects that explains that as well. So go ahead and check out Jeff Chen on both Twitter and GitHub. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about the Oleg Endo kit that Macho Nacho talked about. I guess the proper term for this kit is the Venus Sub 2020. When this tweet first came out, I really didn't know anything about the Sega Nomad. Not like uh, I know a lot about the Sega Nomad now, but after watching the Macho Nacho video, you know, it kind of helps you out a little bit. I was not not sure about this kit at all. I wasn't sure if this was a complete replacement board for the Sega Nomad. If you look in the pictures here, the kit has this one giant board here. There's a LiPo battery on this one side and the other side is a built-in LCD screen. So at first I thought this might be a complete replacement for the Sega Nomad board, but now I know that it's kind of only a replacement for the screen side of the Sega Nomad. There's kind of two different boards. One is the actual like Sega Genesis parts, the ASIC and everything. And the other side is to drive the LCD. So this Oleg Endo kit is a replacement for the screen side. Macho Nacho makes a great video about how to do every step of the mod. I don't really envision myself doing this mod in the future. So it's nice to see kind of detailed step-by-steps on exactly how to put the mod together. One thing to note while I'm looking through the footage here is that there are some parts that are optional in this kit. And there are some parts of this kit that you actually have to cut traces on the board. So it is not a no cut mod to do all the features that Macho Nacho shows in his video. I think for a lot of people, this video was kind of the first time to get like a little bit hands on in this mod. You might not know anything about what's involved with this mod. When this mod is first released, people might have had a hard time justifying 167 USD. People might have a hard time justifying that kind of money without having any knowledge of how to install it or what the mod entails. So it's nice to have someone's hands on experience with the mod. Unfortunately, it's going to be a while before the next batch of these Sega Nomad kits. Oleg Endo on Twitter said that because of the chip shortages, he has to do a redesign of the mod. So he expects it's gonna be quarter two of this year, but it sounds like it's also gonna be a version two or like a new iteration of the mod and not just uh, more of the original mod. So go ahead, check out the Macho Nacho video if you wanna know everything there is to know right now about this Oleg Endo Sega Nomad screen and battery replacement mod. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. And get subscribed so you don't miss any of my mod installation tutorials or my retro modding news videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.